Mm. I can imagine. No, no, no. So you don't want me to say other things, okay? So I to go down there. <laughs> no, you can say, you can say. That one I'll filter. Uh, yeah, so. Come on, say. What was the theme for tonight? Something about swimming. Come on. So then the on. number of completion. Okay, so 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 uh I I presume uh, that you rush where you have kept your Bible, bring it close, eh? Uh, those who have their notebooks also bring it close. Mm. Uh tonight I want to spend time with with number seven. Courtesy of the prayers we had crossing over. Somehow, uh, Brighton, we have a group also, the ones who have already completed their month of prayer, they hang out together in a, in a, fellowship, in a WhatsApp fellowship group called Truth. And so it has become a norm for us uh, to, meet, to meet on Fridays. So the truth part meets every Friday. They join the ones who are praying every month. So we pray for the new team like you. And we keep also praying for us as part of the other team that had already gone before you. And most of the time, uh, and as, as we also wait for the wedding bells and the relationships, I, I, was, I was lucky this, uh, I was blessed this Thursday to have some marital classes. I had some four couples uh, down at, at, at Westlands. It was, it was amazing just hanging out with them, hearing their stories, how they found one another and stuff like that. It's always a pleasure. And so for, for tonight, we, we, we are, I'm going back to the message of the crossover night from June to July, the crossover night. And we happened to have mentioned that we have entered the seventh month. And I, I had a really big and deep uh, revelation of the Lord that yeah, this, if, if we can turn our normal things to be supernatural, then we, are, we will always tap into the supernatural. But if we allow just natural to be natural, then we, we miss out on the supernatural. So uh, July is a natural and normal month that happens to us physically here through the Gregorian calendar. But we can, we can, we can, we can choose to wear the uh, supernatural eyes and decide to say, what does seven mean? And what does uh, the seventh month mean? And we all know that when you go into the scriptures, uh, seven happens to be one of those numbers that has many significant things that have been discussed uh, scripturally. And the Lord was, in fact, he being the one who instituted the number seven by virtue of him choosing to rest on the seventh day. And ever since, calendar dates have been orchestrated around the seven. You know, even our own work schedules uh, go through the same circles. And so by virtue of that, uh, I decided, you know, tonight I still felt like I want to take you deeper because you are still in, in the seventh month so that you guys can harvest spiritually what is you can harvest in this month, what you can be able to acquire in this month. So I, I beseech you to open your spiritual antennas uh, tap into your spiritual self because you too are triune your body mind and spirit and you connect with god by virtue you are also spirit so god being spirit and you being spirit you are able to connect uh, the only problem is we often don't feed our spiritual self so we become strong on the outer physical self and uh, weak on the inner spiritual self and that's why even when trials and temptations come our way Sometimes they overcome us, not because we don't know what is supposed to be done, but because we do not have the capacity and the strength to withstand the talent that has been thrown towards us. And by virtue, we are here tonight. We are not just uh, any other secular group. We are also 
uh, building spiritual muscles so that we can tackle things spiritually and harvest them too. So I am going to give some of uh, the few definitions of number seven in the Bible. And I want you to understand them also in the context of your personal life that you can be able to amalgamate the situations that you're going through with, with the scriptures uh, the Lord is decreeing and that you can connect your situations to the divine moment that we are in in the seventh month and therefore be able to tap into a grace that you may not have tapped if you are not aware so that you don't fall prey to what the word of the Lord says that my people perish for lack of knowledge. Tonight is one of those moments that your mind is going to be opened up and your heart opened up to the spiritual things of God that you may be knowledgeable. So how I pray that the grace of understanding, because knowledge by itself without understanding does not amount to much, but knowledge when it is understood, then it is on its way to becoming wisdom. Because wisdom is, is the action aspect of knowledge by virtue that it is knowledge understood and implemented. Knowledge understood and implemented. So uh, to me, uh, wisdom is a verb, it's a doing word. So it is an action of accomplishing that which you have known and understood. And so tonight I pray for the grace of understanding. So just, just lift up your voice and say, Lord, help me understand. Again, Lord, help me, give me the knowledge of the deeper things. And Lord, open my mind that I may see. And finally, Lord, may I utilize the knowledge I will receive tonight to harvest a blessing for me, for everyone around me, in Jesus' name. Come on, just give it a big amen. So number one, which, which is still part of the theme of tonight, Seven is seen as the number of completion or the number of perfection. So, so I'm, I'm, uh, that's where I want to start. Number one is number of completion, number of perfection. So, and we see in the book of Genesis chapter number one and chapter number two, uh, God embarks into the aspect of creation and he begins as he creates his things. I don't know if you have often noticed the words that he uses. And he saw that it was good. So he every after every creation story, he sees that it was good. And as early as this, I want to decree upon us that we also have the same creative ability to create things and to see that they are good. And how I pray that, from, from tonight that you are going to receive the grace to create things and you are able to look at them and say, it is good. So to do things and you look at them and say, it is good. To, to, you know, to, to, be, to, to utilize the giftings and talents that the Lord has given you and when you have actioned them, you look at what you have done and you say that it is good. It is only when he gets to the sixth day and he creates man that he changes, he adds uh, a, a, another statement to the goodness and he says, it, he is very good, very good. Uh, meaning that he epitomizes man in his creation. So by virtue of we are the epitome of his creation, so we consider ourselves very good. So uh, here and now in your own space there, just, just decree to yourself, I am very good. However guilty you're feeling inside, however not so good you're feeling inside, I want you to just decree it. And, and since I'm, I'm noticing a few guilty minds, just decree it five times, give it five uh, times. One, I am very good. Two, I am very good. Three, I am very good. Four, I am very good. Five, I am very good. And I decree and only every guilty mind that there is a room for guilty mind to be cleansed. It is called repentance. 
<laughs> so thou shalt say sorry and you remain forgiven and you are reinstated to be very good. Amen. Amen. So uh, I want to, so that I, I, I have summarized that. That's completion. God created everything. So on the seventh day, he goes into rest uh, and, and, and he decrees uh, the day to be a, a resting day because he, everything is complete. Uh, so seven uh, is no longer just, just another number. It is, it is an indication of completion. Now understand also the devil being a creation of God also utilizes the same number. If you read the book of Revelations, he say there is there is this uh, monsterish uh, thing that uh, that has seven heads, so indicating that he will also raise a perfect kingdom in the universe to rule evil in an evil manner. Mm -hmm. In in those days when 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 there will be persecution coming down upon the church. So, uh, so the, the the devil also understands uh, understands the number seven as a number of completion and perfection. So, I I don't want to just make you think that seven can be utilized only in the kingdom of God. The seven just stands for that aspect of completion, perfection. So there is seven. I think you have understood to that point. And, and before I move on to the second point, I want to us to notice this, that in this seventh month, the Lord, if we would capture things according to the divine nature of his aspects, we can be able to usher in perfection into our own lives. If there be an area that you are not experiencing perfection, then this is your month of prayer and decreeing that my things shall be perfected. Maybe you have been struggling in your academics and you have been struggling in getting your... Amen. Amen. Kwani kumehanga wa ni nini internet? Let's continue. Omondu mekanyanka waya. We exalt you. We, anoint, we anoint ourselves in your presence. So your presence is the only two righteous presence that can assist us. And therefore we lift our voices. We use the very mouths, Lord, sometimes the enemy uses. So that, Lord, tonight you may cleanse us, O God. You may use us, O God. You may fill us with the Holy Spirit. You may anoint us, Holy One of Israel. King of kings and Lord of lords. Lord, we bless you, we adore you, we exalt you. Receive all the honor, my God. Receive all honor, receive all honor, receive all honor. Receive all honor. King of kings and Lord of lords, receive all honor, receive all praise. There is none like you. And the enemy may be using to get to us by just uh, repenting and just telling the Lord to forgive us. Maybe this week we were not in a, in, the, in a place of righteousness. We messed up, we did something wrong. Forgive us, dear Lord. Have mercy on us. Mungu tupe kibali ya kusimama mbele yako kwa kutakasa. Cleanse us, King of Glory. Forgive me, King of Glory, for all the messes and the guilt that I may have, I, may, I worked on, King of Glory, for the lies, for the pride, for the anger, for, for, for mis misquoting, misleading. Any moments, Lord, I have done of any, every offense, Lord, I am guilty, as charged, and repent purely and wholly with my heart, with my soul, Forgive me, dear Lord. Cleanse me, Lord. Mm -hmm. Purify me. Lord, in my imperfection, I bring because tonight you want to perfect me. 
So I bring my imperfection before you, Lord, that your precious blood may cleanse me, that your precious blood may, may purify me, that your precious blood may make me whole again. I welcome you, Holy Spirit. So we welcome the Holy Spirit once more, the cleansing power of God. Come, Holy Spirit. Consuming fire, consume every darkness in us. Consume every, every where the evil one has taken charge. We reinstate ourselves in your presence, my God. We reinstate ourselves. Lord, bring us back to a place of, of holiness. Bring us back to a place of wholeness. Bring us back to a place of righteousness. Bring us back to you know, kings and Lord of Lords that we may be able to stand. We are not worthy by ourselves, but through Christ we are worthy. He made us whole, he forgave us, he cleansed us, he died for our part, that we may receive his life. And Lord Jesus, we want to be like you, to do things that please the Father. So everything that displeases him, we repent and receive your forgiveness. Thank you, King of Glory, for forgiving us. Thank you for blessing us. And we put on the whole armor of the Lord that we may be able to withstand the fairy darts of the enemy. We take upon our head the helmet of salvation. We take upon our hearts the uh, breastplate of righteousness. We take upon our waist the shield of uh, the belt of truth. We put on the shoes of the gospel of peace. And we take upon the shield of faith and the double-edged sword of the word of the Lord in the spirit. We are armed and dangerous. And therefore can mm. be able to stand. And your word says, stand still and see mm. the salvation of the Lord. So tonight mm. we be asking of glory. If there be anything that we have opened doors for the enemy, we ask you that you may be able to close those Jesus. doors for us. As you shut the door of Noah's ark, that no water would come in, may you also shut mm. the doors of our souls, shut mm. the doors of our spirit, that no evil mm. may come in. In Jesus' mm. mighty name, we pray in thanksgiving. Amen. 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 Mm. And amen. Okukwetu vitu ni very dynamic. Let me just say this. Eh? Uh, we, we, see, we see the Lord and we also see the enemy. So, but we know what to do. We always know what to do. We can always run back to the Lord and he's on our side and he can fight the battles if they don't belong to us. So may the Lord perfect us also in our, in our walk, in our talk, in our thoughts. May the Lord also perfect us in our mindsets. May the Lord perfect us. And some of us, uh, because of, of, of our flawed mentalities, because of our flawed character, we end up not being at the position of blessing that we are supposed to be. But tonight, uh, as we have also repented, we ask the Lord that he may perfect our character that the Lord may also perfect our, our, our talk, our language, our conversations, that the Lord may perfect us. And, and tonight I'm also asking the Lord to do a different kind of a perfection, that the Lord may, may perfect, uh, since the past is the past, we can't do anything about it, but we can offer it to the Lord for perfection so that we, we don't decree that he goes to our past to perfect it, but he can heal our past and perfect our future so that our future may become greater than our past in Jesus name. So that's, mm -hmm. that's gonna be our option and we pray that uh, for tonight. And so I want to move on to number, number two. So seven can stand for perfection, but number two also seven uh, stands for covenant, fulfillment of a promise or taking an oath like swearing. So covenant, Number seven can stand for a covenant, fulfillment of a promise, or taking an oath. Mm -hmm. I swear. Mm -hmm. So this, where is where is this coming from? This is coming from uh, if you read the scriptures in the original languages, like in the Hebrew language, the where the, the word swearing. Whenever you hear the Lord saying, uh, uh, I taking a swearing and saying, I I shall destroy the earth. You know, and he swears. That word swearing comes, uh, the Hebrew word, when you read the scriptures in the Hebrew language, it will say Shabbat, Shabbat, Shabbat. And that same Hebrew word, number seven, it says Shabbat. So swearing Shabbat, 
uh, number seven, Sheba. So both of them are derived from the same Hebrew word called Saba, Saba. Now Saba, you remove H, Saba, like in Swahili, seven in Swahili, Saba. So uh, when, when we read scriptures, let, let me give you an example. Let's just take the scripture, Isaiah 45, verse number 23. If you can quickly, I think I had requested us to also have our Bibles by us. So if you quickly read, Isaiah, did I give you the script? Isaiah 45, 23. So we see what the Lord, uh, we just use that as an example there. Eh? Ronnie, I think I downloaded in your phone my sword, so you can check out that that specific scripture. Mm -hmm. I don't Who's have there? sword. I don't have sword. Mm -hmm. Who's yeah. there to read for us what the Lord is saying? <laughs> but let me let me. Let me get it. Let me get Isaiah. Isaiah 45, 23. Eh? It says, you. By myself I have sown, for my mouth <laughs> has gone forth in righteousness, a word that shall not return. To me, every nail shall bow, and every tongue shall swear. The word of the mm. Lord. Thanks be to God. Very serious. Very serious. I want you, Ray, since you are next to your Bible, also you will, you're going to be reading Zephaniah 1.5. Zephaniah 1.5. So, I have sworn, that is what uh, Isaiah 45.23 we have had. I have sworn by myself, the word is gone out of my mouth in righteousness and shall not return. That unto me every knee shall bow, every tongue confess. This, this was Isaiah decreeing the word of the Lord that came to be fulfilled completely by Jesus. And we read that in Philippians chapter 2, from verse 5, it says he was he was given a name above all names, huh? that every knee shall bow, every tongue confess to the glory of God the Father. Huh? Are you there? Are you also there now? At the final one five. Yes. It says, Your ancestors, where are they? And the prophets, do they live forever? But my words and my okay, so this is verse six. Yeah. Five, but my only. Word, uh -huh. five only. Oh, okay. okay. Uh, book six. Uh, I went to the sharing part. Yeah, I think six has what you intend to five. pass across. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, so let me repeat this. Phaniah 1, 5 and 6. Your ancestors, where are they? And the prophets, do they live forever? But my words and my statutes, which I commanded my servants, the prophets, did they not overtake your ancestors? So they repented and said, the Lord of hosts has dealt with us according to our ways and deeds, just as he planned to do. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So... So the, when, when the Lord is decreeing such tough words, if you go to the Hebrew language, it is like he's saying to seven. I seven. <laughs> I seven by myself. I have sown by myself. I seven by myself. The word is gone out of my mouth. So it is like and that's why in the Old Testament, when you read a lot of scriptures, when, when kings decreed, because it was like a swearing, it was like an oath, had to be fulfilled. There was no shortcut. Once the Lord, once it has come out, eh, seven, it is, it is done, it is over, it is finished. So you, you have to accomplish it. So if it is a promise like the way the king, Herod, promised the daughter that ask me even to a third of my kingdom. He, he, when he saw, he sevened. So meaning he had to fulfill that which he has spoken. And when the mother told the girl, go and ask for the head of John the Baptist, 
well, as painful and as hurting it, the the thing was, it had to be done because it was seven. It was sworn. So it is also a number depicting covenant. And oh, somehow I'm tomorrow I'm going to be... Uh, uh, Ronnie, watch out. Somehow tomorrow I'm going to be diving deeper on that, on that issue. So I'm not going to dwell on it a lot. So uh, swearing is like you are sevening. You are you are, you are, you are sevening yourself. If there's any English word like that, it's me creating it. Eh? So look at even how when the Lord swore to in Genesis chapter number nine after the ark of the covenant and he swore that as long as earth is, I will never destroy it again with water. And he releases a sign of his swearing in the picture or rather in a rainbow. The rainbow becomes the sign. And do you know how many colors are in the rainbow? Someone, I mean, you're not that old, you talk a shoulder juice. Seven colors. Yes. Hmm? Seven colors. I swear I will never. And you know, it's very funny that once you see the rainbow, it's like the rain is done. Yeah. The rain is done. Yeah. Whenever you see the rainbow, it's it's so real. You know, the Lord saw, gave out a sign through the rainbow, and it has seven colors. So as we pray tonight, also, we decree. That the Lord, every promise he has sworn over our lives, it shall come to pass in Jesus' name. It shall come to pass. And, and, and some of these promises are, are long overdue. Some of us have stayed, it's, it's, it's overstayed. May the Lord release every promise he has sworn over our lives. And some of us, maybe we don't even know these promises. Cut us off. We don't even know he promised. So we need to go back to our scriptures also and get to know what has the Lord spoken. Eh? Wonderful scriptures like, before you pray, I shall hear your, your, your supplications. Hmm? So we, we need to, to have those scriptures in heart so that we say, whenever you, uh, you feel like the Lord is not answering, you remind him, Lord, your word says that before I even pray, you will have answered me. So, Lord, here I am and I'm waiting. You have said in Matthew 7, 7, knock and the door shall be opened. You know, hey, there is seven again combined and it is all about asking. So, there we, we being a, a month of July, be cautious not to allow your promises to, 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 to delay. This is the month that you can crack promises that have delayed. This is the month that you can have a conversation with God and tell him, Lord, I have waited a long time. Lord, uh, I, I need you. I need you to move as you have sworn, as you, as you have promised, as you have decreed over my life. Let it be. You see, the Lord, well, well, the word we have just read, Isaiah 45, 23, he says his word, he, he his word is righteous. Yani he and and truly that's a fact. John one one says in the beginning was the word and the word was God and was with God and the word was God. So in everything God created, it was created through the word and that word was Jesus. So truly and Jesus is the righteousness of God. So when he says I have sworn, eh, because my word is righteous, it is true that his word is Jesus that every knee shall bow. So maybe you have been going through situations and circumstances that have refused to bow. But as you yield to the perfect one, as you yield to the righteous one, the, the, the situations in your life that have refused to bow, they are going to bow. It's not by power, nor by might, but by my spirit, says the Lord. So they are going to bow. So it is in, it's an alignment issue. Yeah, tonight is also an alignment issue. Where are you aligned? If you are aligned out of out of the perfection of God, then then you you do not warrant. You cannot tell God that you you deserve this. It is when you are under you are properly aligned in His righteousness, and our righteousness can only be guaranteed through Christ Jesus. Then we can be able to cry out to the Lord that what you have promised me, I it is time to receive, and you shall receive. Hmm? So I, I move on, I move on. So number three, seven is also a number in the scriptures that uh, depict exoneration and healing. 
exoneration and healing for those who are writing. And, and listen, and listen well, eh? every seventh year, the Israelites were to cancel all their debts they had made with each other and free their slaves. So if you had enslaved anybody on the seventh year, you were supposed to release them. And if someone had, you had someone's debt, someone owed you money for seven years, on the seventh year, you are supposed to set them free completely from that debt. So even land, you are supposed to return. On the seventh year, anything that was owed, it was a time of exoneration. People are in the, you, 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 you will, you, on the seventh year, you walk scot free. If you are a slave, you're freed. If you are under any form of bondage, you're freed. And we are in the seventh month. I want to decrease some freedom for somebody. You know, maybe you are the one who has someone's debt, but freedom will not come. Then they may not understand this revelation. But since you, you understand now this revelation that the Lord is bringing into your life, we, I, may, may you rise up in a prayer and tell the Lord, yangu. you know, there was this woman who had an issue with, uh, she was a widow and, and there, were, there was money she owed. And she came to prophet Elisha and said, you know, I am in trouble. What do I do? And Elisha told her, Go and fill, go and get jars, fill them with oil. And the moment Elijah poured oil into that, into those jars, the the oil never ceased in the, because the Lord wanted her to utilize that the sales of the oil to pay off all her debts. So that shall be your story. If you owe people money and they don't get this revelation, but you, you have the revelation, the Lord is going to give you the way out of those debts the way out so that ufutiwe denizako. And this is our month ya kufutiwa madeni. So if you have debt and it doesn't matter how impossible they are, they may be running into their millions, but the Lord, if you capture this revelation, you can seek out the Lord Muambia on this seventh month. Lord, I want you to cancel my debts. I want you to cancel my situations that I, I, I owe people. And also for them that have people that owe you, that the Lord may help them may give them the grace to settle your scores. And may, if the Lord also gives you the grace to forgive, yes, the Lord shall pay you. Give the debt. You see me, I always say this. When you forgive, you are, you are telling the Lord, you pay me. So it's not really a loss. You're just telling the Lord, you pay me. So I forgive this human being who has my debt, but I am requesting you that you may settle the bills. And the Lord is a good payer. Him, he has no debts. He pays in full. So number seven is also, I have said, exoneration and healing. So when we read uh, the book of Matthew, chapter number 18, verse 21 to 22, there was an issue that Peter was raising with Jesus. And he was asking the Lord, you know, how many times should I forgive someone? Seven times. And you see, as he told the Lord seven times, I think Peter was missing the revelation of the number seven. Because as the Lord was listening, she was saying, Peter, you have just told me that you should forgive seven times, meaning perfectly, always, ever. But you're not really getting the number seven you're quoting to me. And so he quotes it back to Peter and says 70 times seven. He, he complicates the mathematics. But what he's really saying, it's not, he's not even talking about for 90. He is talking about, you know, forgive, 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 forgive perfectly. Forgiveness is one of those attitudes that we need to perfectly enter into. That we, when we say we are forgiving, uh, it means that there is nothing that cannot be forgiven. Uh, and, I, and I really mean the very uh, uh, latter of that word, that there is nothing that you cannot forgive. When we enter into forgiveness, and Jesus depicted this clearly uh, through the seven words that he also spoke before he died. And one of them is, Father, 
forgive them for they know not what they are doing. Yet people are really killing him. They were, they were spitting at him. They were ridiculing him. You know, they were talking all sorts of rubbish things, but he, he, he still exonerated them through forgiving. And you see, the greatest healing happens when we are able to forgive. When we are able to forgive, there is so much healing. Some of the diseases and, and, and problems and the stress and depressions that we go through are courtesy of us not being able to forgive one, ourselves, two, others, three, God, you know, uh, and four situations. We are unable to forgive and, and therefore we, we go through pain and suffering. So for us to also to come to a place of perfection and healing, then we need to understand that seven is also a number of healing. And I pray, and we are going to pray also, that be healed tonight. Be healed. Let this month not pass without you being healed. Allow me to, to give you a premonition of the next number. The next number is eight. August is number eight. And eight is a number of new beginnings. And I stop there. So don't enter into new beginnings if you have not settled the old, uh, the old happenings. That means forgive, 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 and let go. And, and, and tomorrow, some of the things you're go, uh, on Sunday, some of the things you're going to deal with will we'll, we'll have an angle of these situations that we are talking about here tonight. Remember the story of Naaman the leper. He was told by Elisha, go and dip yourself into the river Jordan. How many times? Let me see if someone reads their Bible. How many times? Seven times. Even if you don't read your Bible, you know I'm talking about number seven. So you can imagine you're right. <laughs> seven times. And he was like, I mean, this is a dirty river. Really? We knew where I come from, there are even better, cleaner rivers. Why are you telling me to dip? And he was told by e -e -e, when the man of God says something, he just do it. Eh? You have no idea why they are saying it. And after he dipped himself, the Bible says, eh, you can read it's Second so Kings. Mm. Second Kings chapter number five, nine to ten. Uh, you can just read the whole of five. You can, but it's a beautiful story. And it says that the leprosy left him, and his skin was like that of a baby. Maybe mm? this is something that they like hearing. Skin of a baby. Mm? I shall, uh, if the Lord tells me where you self, I shall tell you. But you capture the, the thing. The thing is healing, healing. On utilizing the number seven, he was able to receive fullness of healing and he came back to the fullness of himself and even better, a skin of a baby. So I want to finish up with number four, which uh, number seven also uh, depicts rest, uh, means rest. So this one I want us to read because being the final part, uh, this is a place I also want us to be ushered into. Uh, Hebrews chapter number four, verse one to four. Someone who's there? The last letter of St. Paul. Chapter. chapter four, verse one to four. Go on. Uh, now, now God has offered us the promise that we may receive that, that rest he spoke about. Let us take care then that none of you will be found to have failed to receive that promised rest. For we have had the good news just as they did. They had the message, but it did them no good. Because when they had it, they did not accept it with faith. We who believe then do receive th that rest which God promised. It is just as he said. I was angry and made a solemn promise. They will never enter the land where I would have given them rest. He said this even though his work had been finished from the time he created the world. For, for somewhere in the scriptures, this is said about the seventh day. God rested on the seventh day from all his work. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks, David. So rest, rest is, 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 a, is a phenomena. It's a mystery that people hardly understand. Uh, rest is, has nothing to do with laziness. Let me just, first of all, just get that clear. Uh, rest has nothing to do with laziness. 
Uh, in fact, on the contrary, rest has to has everything to do with having worked well, efficiently, hard enough, uh, smart, and then taken a rest. Mm -hmm. So it is it is be, having done what you are you're supposed to do for six days, and then you are able to take your rest. So you will find that seven also depicts rest. And this kind of rest that the Lord wants to usher us into, it is received through faith. Let me just say this. Everything tonight we have shared, uh, because I have taught in a different kind of manner. <laughs> who, who teaches with a number? But uh, it is supposed to, you, you're supposed to receive with faith. And when you do not receive God's word with faith, uh, you hear what he says. And I swore that they shall not enter into my rest. That's what he showed when, they, when the people refuted the message of Moses. Uh, the Lord swore that he, they will not enter into his rest. Though he himself had entered into rest after creating the creation, but he is able to, to, to swear to seven you, to seven you again, to, that to you, you will not enter into his rest. May that not be our story. Because many other times we worry ourselves with things of this world so much that we do not enter into a place of rest. You will find some people are not even able to go for prayers, are not able to set a time aside to just uh, have a moment with God. It looks like they are giving God too much. Uh, they, they do not know that being in the presence of God is synonymous with resting. Being in the presence of God is, is, is a place of recuperation, as we have read in, in we have had in the in the third uh, definition, that it is a place of healing, it is a place of wholeness, it is a place of replenishment, it is a place of being made whole, it is a place of being restrengthened, it is a place of being re-energized, enthusiastic again, so that you can go again and, and be able to serve. And, and some of us are tired and weary. Maybe circumstances have put us down. Maybe situations have put us down and we are not able to enter into the place of rest. Tonight and throughout this month, May you receive this word by faith and mix it, mix it with faith. The rotuba, arti ya rotuba ambao ineza, itawezesha hili neno kuweza kukua, ni, ni imani, arti yenye imani, be, be, a, be at a place of faith, that you may receive this seed word, that it may be planted into that faith and it will grow and bear fruit in your life. That Lord, the Lord decrees that the only struggle we need to have is to enter into his rest. So, and so I, I want to paint a different picture also of rest. This rest also is, is salvation. This rest is redemption. This rest is being uh, coming out of trouble. So when, when the Israelites were brought out of Egypt, they were brought into the rest, into, into the presence of God. They were, when, when Adam, as, as God was going to rest, Adam was placed into Eden. The Eden meaning also the presence of God. So he was placed into rest so that he didn't have to do so much. The only thing he had to do is not eat the fruit of Ile Natonga Katikati. Then these other things he was able to enjoy except that. So, but many are, are the times that us, we have put our, our, our vision, ambitions into the fulfillment is only through us. We are the alpha and omega of our life. We are the masters of our destiny. And therefore being masters of our own destiny, the Lord has not ushered us into a place of rest. He has allowed us to master our own destiny. And look how well we are doing. Look how, 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 how far we have fallen because we, we, we chose to walk the path. And the Bible says, a trust is he who trusts in man. Whether the man is self, it, you still remain at a place of a trust. But they that shall trust, the Bible says in Isaiah 40, they that shall trust in the Lord, they shall mount on wings like eagles. It says that even the young shall grow weary, that them, but them that trust in the Lord shall never grow weary. This is what the Lord wants for every one of us. Do not, and, and let me tell you, whenever you find yourself at a place of weariness, at a place you're feeling tired, it is you, your body, mind, and spirit is telling you it is time for a rest.
it is time for coming home to be able to be healed, recuperate, and be able to be re-energized. And so this is also our month whereby I want to decree that may we have rest, especially those who are fighting demonic and evil things. May we have rest for those who are fighting situations of disfavor and, re uh, and rejection in the name of Jesus Christ. May we have rest. Vita zingine tumepigiana ni too much. I, I want to decree on someone who's tired of battling that may you receive the rest of Christ. May you receive the redemption of Christ. May you come into a place of salvation whereby you can look back and say, I was a slave, but now I am whole. I, I am a free person. Freedom is guaranteed in the presence of Christ. Freedom is guaranteed in the presence of God. And the Lord, when the Lord tells you to do something, him, he knows that that which he gives you has rest. The Lord, the Lord's blessings are death, no sorrows. But the ones that we have brought ourselves, they have misfortunes and failure. But that which comes from the Lord has nothing, no regret, nothing. In the name of Jesus Christ, may you receive it. May you receive your place of rest. May you come to your place of salvation. May you come to your place of redemption. Let this be a mount of being set free. Let the chains be broken in this month. Let your situations be made. May the Lord go before you as he has decreed in Isaiah 45 that I shall go before you and level the mountains and fill the valleys. I'll break the bronze gates and uh, bring down the strong iron. That, and he will even go on, he says, to, to reveal to us uh, wealth hidden in dark and secret places. These are the things we need to be operating in. You see, the Bible has also decreed that he has set up the wealth of the wicked for them that are righteous. So we need to align ourselves to Vizuri so that the Lord can also align the wealth of the wicked to come into us, that the Lord can align favor into our lives, that the Lord can align blessings into our lives, that the Lord can align healing into our lives, that the Lord can align so many good things that he has set on our path. So let this be your month of decreeing. And I'm glad that, you know, Ronnie, the Lord uh, led him to, to take us to a place. We are going to finish this month in a place of high. We are going to enter into three days of fasting as we go to the end of this month. So that if there be anything, you know, the word of the Lord says that some of the, 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 uh, the disciples of the Lord were unable to deliver someone from some demonic power. And when the Lord rebuked, it was able to go and they were asking, why were we unable? And he was told, you know, the disciples were told that some can only go through fasting and prayer. So our last three days of this month, we are going to be fasting and praying is to tell the Lord, pengine tumekua tukiomba hiyo mwezi yote ya July, but things, some things have persisted on, and they look like they are going to go into August, and so we are going to give them a moratorium through our fasting and prayer, and tell the Lord, as the disciples were unable to defeat uh, through their prayers, uh, whatever the demonic power that was molesting that person, that you, you came in, and you are able to rebuke it. So we are going to tell the Lord, as we pray, we are going to pray yes, but uh, at the when we are finishing up and things are not yet right i want to tell people that we are going to go even deeper we are not going to let this month go until we have received every portion of our blessing that has our name on it in the name of jesus christ i don't know who is who 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 wants to pray right now i don't know who wants who feels like the spirit of the lord has already uh, percolated into your spirit and your faith has heightened and is a, is aroused that we may be able to stand and just spend a few minutes in the presence of god and be able to pray these four points that we have had tonight that the lord may bring them to fruition in our lives so if you're ready just just come out of your comfort place you 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 know the drill now and those ones who are new when we say comfort places we are telling you come out of your bed eh? come out of your seat for a minute let's let's just stand up or kneel down or just and go before the lord and just be able to soak in this word that he has released be able to go deeper you know the lord is individual so uh, as much as he's communal. So he wants to deal with you personally. And, and personally, I may not know what you're going through. And maybe the Lord had you, this was your word tonight, but you need to do a conversation with your father in heaven so that he can be able to resolve things for you. Oh, we thank you, King of glory. Begin to just worship the Lord as you, as you come out of your comfort place. Oh, we give you glory. We give you honor. 
We give you exaltation, Holy One of Israel. We adore you, Lord. We exalt you and magnify your holy name. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your mercy, King of Glory. It's always a privilege to just mention your name and to bless you, King of Glory. If the seraphims, cherubims, and all the host of angels, all they are crying is holy, holy, holy. For eons and eons of years, uh, for eternity, they will rise up and look at you and see a new revelation of your holiness and they decree holy, holy, holy. So Lord, we want to just enjoin them for these few minutes that we are going to be in your presence. We just adore you, King of glory, to lift up our hands, to lift up our hearts to you. We adore you, mighty one. We exalt you. And it doesn't matter whether you know what to say before the Lord. You can just repeat the words of the angels, holy, holy, holy. Or just say hallelujah, the highest praise. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. And just lift up. And some of us, the Lord has, is going to usher us into a place of even tongues. You go deeper. As the Lord puts you deeper into prayer, as the Lord puts you deeper into worship, come on, just worship. Worship this holy presence. We worship you, Holy One of Israel. We adore you, Holy One of Israel, King of kings and Lord of lords. We adore you, we exalt you. My God, my God, I exalt you. My God, my God, I adore you. My God, my God, you are worthy. There is no other God but you. I am privileged to be 